If you're a company operating in this global economy, you want people coming in and out of your network. That is how you do business. Information is the lifeblood of planet Earth right now. We're using software and we're using computer systems that were designed and built to defend against the threats of a decade ago. And guess what? The bad guys have learned. It is clear that there are people trying to take advantage of mistakes that may have been made in the code by finding a way through the firewall uh, into our information. I'm on domains.aol.com and uh, because of the particular vulnerability they've got called cross-head scripting, um, I'm able to inject anything I want onto this page. A lot of times you've got breaches that occur that never get detected or breaches that are occurring continuously that don't get detected until a year, two years down the road. American businesses certainly are at risk, and it's an increasing risk. The corporations are definitely attractive because you can have that economic and psychological impact on the American populace you can't get from attacking the government. All systems are, are vulnerable. It's just a question of knowing your vulnerabilities or having unknown vulnerabilities. No one knows the amount of money that's been stolen yearly, but conservatively it's $100 billion. I think people are just starting to realize that this is organized crime 2.0. When we think of hackers, we often think about some 17-year-old, nerdy, high school kid who um, is playing around with the computer and getting into various databases. That's just not the case today. Hackers today are parts of units and teams around the world, many of whom are coming out of Russia and Eastern Europe, um, and are using increasingly sophisticated ways to hack into banks and companies. We should never, ever, ever be so arrogant to think that we're not a potential victim or our data has not been compromised or that there's not some adversary out there that's just as smart, if not smarter than we are, to be able to compromise this data. It's like a war. You're up against an enemy that's innovating. You'll never see a medieval castle where they built this castle and went, there, we're done. That's not how wars are fought. Computer security people have been focusing on trying to protect network traffic from getting from point A to point B. And that paradigm has failed. It's about the programs, not about the network. I think we're headed towards every application protects themselves, that we're able to vaccinate an application so that it is impervious to attack. And if an application is impervious to attack, it can protect the data that's sitting behind it. There's no such thing as toy software. It's all stuff that people are gonna bet their lives on whether you think they're going to or not. You've got to take this stuff seriously. The systems that you're building today, even if they seem like they're experimental, if they succeed, they're going to become critical stuff that people are going to rely on tomorrow. Hi, I'm Matt. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to install and configure a RAP program called Dark Comet. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Uh, if you use this program to do illegal things over the internet, I am not uh, responsible in any way. So, uh, use with caution. Uh, be responsible. 
let's go. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to go to dark comment, uh, darkcommentrat.com. Uh, you can just Google it, it'll take you straight to the home page. Download it from the download tab, choose the first one. Right now they're, uh, they've got the version 3.3. Once you download that, um, next step would be to go to noip.com. This is where you want to get your domain name. This is free. Once you set up a free account, you've got your options here and you want to add a host. You go into add a host. Under host name, you type in anything that you want. Then from the drop down menu next to it, you want to go under the no, I, no IP free domains list and choose uh, which, which one you want to use. Keep in mind it is free as long as you stick with the ones under that list. You don't have to mess with anything else. You go to create host. In this case I've already done so, so I'm not going to. Uh, once you do that, you go into ma under manage hosts. And it will show you your domain name and your IP address. Um, once you've got this, you're pretty much done with the downloading and setting up a domain. Uh, one other step that I had to do was to go into my router under the port forwarding options and port forward a certain port for this to work. Uh, if you need help doing that, I'm sure there's other tutorial videos out there, but uh, we're just going to focus on the dark comment program for right now. So once you've got um, once you've got your dark comment installed and your IP, no IP host no IP domain host set up. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to get rid of the configuration file just to show you how to set it up. Uh, click on the client exe folder and you're going to get this little disclaimer. I want to look at this again so I click that and you just wait for it to allow you to accept. Okay now once you have accepted it brings up the brings up the dark comment program uh, this is the connections tab where uh, it's going to list the computers that you have um, I guess victimized uh, I'll show you how to do that under sockets this is uh, the this is the uh, tab where you want to add the port that you chose um, for your port forwarding in this case I chose port 80 and you click listen so right now it's listening um, from once you've got that going you go under uh, edit server now this is where you're gonna create the file that's going to uh, install a backdoor on your victim computer uh, under the first tab main settings you want to hit generate a few times under process mutex just to get a random number um, next step uh, would be network settings here under IP and DNS is where you want to put your uh, domain name you got from noip.com in this case I put my LX dot noip dot info and I'm putting the port and you want to go to add this configuration and then test the network I've got all green so I'm good to go that means I'm definitely got a connection uh, module startup some pretty cool features I'm not going to go through all of that right now uh, install message basically once you've got your module server uh, on the victim computer and um, you activate it uh, this will pop up a message you can have it say whatever you want to uh, just we're not going to mess with that um, Module Shield, some pretty good features, disabling task manager, disabling registry, firewall, stuff like that. Keylogger, you can uh, have uh, Keylogger, uh, Keylogger automatically start up with your server module and send you the log files. Uh, host files, you're not going to deal with. Choose icon, um, if, you, if you're, if you're going to make this to where it's hidden, you don't need to choose a icon, an icon right now. I'm going to go with... Uh, Google Chrome icon, they've got a few in here, Firefox, LimeWire, stuff like that. Um, plugins, the Dark Comet website I think has a plugins page, so you can check that out. Um, file binder is really cool, you can attach uh, a certain file or program to open up with your server module. 
so in this case I'm choosing Chrome so I can make it to where uh, I can swap out their original Google Chrome icon with mine and it'll still open their browser but it'll also activate my server module um, build module is your last step you can choose which extension you want um, right now we're not going to deal with any of this I'm just going to go ahead and build the server I've already got one made um, you basically just type in the name and hit save um, now to test this out what we're going to do I'm going to go to connections so you can see uh, when it comes up but I have a Windows XP running on a virtual machine right now I'm going to go in and choose the Google Chrome that I have already created and put it on the desktop. Whenever you're ready. There we go. Okay. Uh, so as soon as I activate it, you're going to see this comes up. It tells you that your victim computer is online and you are getting a connection from them. Uh, so you can see that they popped up on my list uh, it shows that they're in America some basic information including RAM language name of computer operating system uh, so we're just gonna double click on that and this is basically your this is basically where you command everything now from here you can do pretty much everything you want to do to a computer you can go into system folders um, I'll just show you a couple things uh, this is a really neat feature, Trace Map. It pretty much shows you, kind of narrows down where their computer is located. So we're in around Houston, and so it shows me that this computer is around Houston. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, fun functions. This is the stuff that I really want to show you. It's uh, for pranking. This is this is the best right here. Um, as I go down this list, I'm going to start hiding these things, and you can see what's happening on the XP machine over here. So I can hide the desktop, hide the clock, uh, hide task icons, uh, hide the whole task bar. I can hide just the startup menu. Now this, this one is for XP only, that's also why I chose XP on my virtual machine. Um, you can also disable the start menu or the start uh, start button so you can't do anything with it but that could be really frustrating also this one's really fun can freak people out it's the open CD tray button click it it just pops open their CD tray uh, piano you basically make a bunch of noise send a message I'm not gonna change this I'm just gonna show you, you send it and they get a message so you can send them some scary messages like you just got hacked or something like that uh, Microsoft Reader. This basically will read it, read out um, whatever you type in here on the victim's computer. It'll just read it out over their uh, over their speakers, so that that can freak them out too. Uh, you've got System Functions, Process Manager. Shows you all the processes that are running. Um, you can do your file management. Get into their C drive. You can get into their C drive, stuff like that, get into all their folders. Uh, passwords, shows you their stored passwords. Spy functions, which is really neat. You can actually access their webcam without them knowing it and watch them live feed. Uh, you can set it up right here. This will show you what cameras they have installed. I don't have any installed on my virtual machine. Um, same thing with the sound capture. If they have a microphone, you can listen in. Remote desktop, uh, this allows you to choose which display if they have multiple monitors you can choose them go to start capture and you can see what's going on live on their uh, on their desktop plus you can you also have mouse control and keyboard control you can turn those off if you just want to, to view um, but you can basically control it from here too so that's pretty pretty neat uh, keylogger it is it, it's a streaming keylogger so it's live so anything that they type in over here uh, just for example, go ahead and and it pops up. So it's kind of cool. Don't want to save that. And throw it away. Uh, um, there's a bunch of other features in here. You should definitely check them out if you decide that you want to mess with this uh, mess with this program. You can 
They have power options. Pretty much, like I said, anything that you want to do, you can do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uninstall my server module from the remote uh, from this location. And you can see that it disappears. Um, okay, uh, keep in mind this is for educational purposes only. This is an administrative tool. Um, it can be used for hacking. Uh, you can get into personal information, so keep in mind that is illegal and do it at your own risk.